uh, I will move into my first topic, which is soap. And when I say that, I understand that talking about soap might not come across as the most interesting thing, but I hope to prove you wrong on that. So, what I want to first point out, uh, what I want to first talk about is, uh, well, so the, the point of soap is to clean, is to clean things, so if, I'm, if we're thinking about dish soap specifically, so you have a dish and it has something stuck on it and you use soap to get that, uh, that food stuck, that's stuck on the plate, off the plate, and down the drain. So what first needs to be explained is how dissolving works. So the one thing is that in, in chemistry and in other topics as well, water is called the universal solvent. And the reason it is called the universal solvent is because in most situations, if you pour water on something, it will start to dissolve it and absorb it into its its structure. So what happens is because water has this shape, uh, this polar shape, where it has uh, two hydrogens and one oxygen, then the the molecule will be attracted to other polar molecules that tend to be in. Um, in food particles. So if you have another molecule that's that's a little lopsided and this isn't the same kind of picture, this is just a description because it's, it's just a I'm just saying it's a dipole which means that one side is positive and one side is negative. So what happens is when you have a molecule that is lopsided then the water molecules will align around it and sort of grab hold of the dipole molecule inside the water so that when it is dissolved in the water you can't tell that the water and the other molecules are two different things so what how this applies to soap is because soap has a similar structure to water but it has a little bit more of a sophisticated sophisticated chemical structure so uh, I'm just gonna clear the board here so the shape of a soap molecule is a uh, polar head so this is uh, a dipole in a sense, and then a tail that is nonpolar or hydrophobic. So what happens is that when you have your water molecules up here, then the water molecules will be attracted to this this uh, polar head of the uh, soap molecule. And then, so the soap itself dissolves into the water. But what happens with this hydrophobic tail over here is that now that the soap has a nonpolar part to itself, the uh, it can dissolve other particles that are nonpolar. So if there is a over here then the soap can be attracted to this and grab onto it similarly to how the water is attracted to uh, similarly to how the water grabs onto the polar head of the soap of the soap particle so an interesting thing is that in nature when you have a bunch of particles in a liquid and or even in a solid it just takes a little longer um, what happens is that there are certain structures that the molecules tend to fall into based off of how many of them there are, how many of them are in one area, and what types of energies they're working with. So, it it uh, nature always wants to go to the most efficient. Um, design of a 
uh, structure or lattice or I guess in water it in, in a liquid it necessarily isn't a, a lattice but um, so what happens is when there's just a few soap mo molecules per uh, food particle then you get your food particle and then the soap particles will tend to circle this food particle and uh, point their tails in, assuming that this food particle is not is nonpolar, and that's the reason why you need soap. If not, then the water would just handle it. But um, so they they circle this this food particle and uh, form a a sort of cage that dissolves the food particle within the soap so that it can be washed away. And what happens when you add more soap and more soap is that these circles become more dense with soap because all of the soap particles are attracted to all of the nonpolar food particles. So there gets to a point where no more soap particles can get uh, get in on this this um, caging of the of the food particles. So then it's no longer efficient because it's not using all of the soap particles. And what happens is that the when when you have too much soap, it tends to fall into a different structure that is not circular but more linear. And you'll see it kind of looks like a flattened out DNA kind of shape. So the, the soap lines up like this, and then there's also the ones on the bottom. And you can imagine this uh, as going uh, also rotating around out of the screen and into the screen into like a cylinder shape. But what happens is all the food particles are stuck in here. And yes, it still dissolves the food particles, but the problem is this is not the most efficient structure because you're wasting all of these particles. You don't need all of these particles. You only need uh, a few per, per food particle. So what tends to happen if you use too much soap is that it, it becomes inefficient. And so uh, it's actually better to, to uh, find a good ratio of soap to food that you need to dissolve, or soap to anything in general. I mean, if you're talking about something on your hands, it, it follows the same principles. But this is the general idea and the chemical structure. This isn't too in-depth, but uh, I, I have listed uh, a source that if you are a little more interested in, in finding out more about this, I've listed uh, a source in the description, so you can check that out um, on your own. But that being said, um, I believe that is uh, all I wanted to talk about on this topic, and I'm not seeing any new questions in the chat, so I'll just play another short ad, and then I'll move into my third topic or my second discussion topic, um, which is Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. So uh, I will be right back with that.